Marco, welcome to the programme. Um, so Greece has submitted a plan, which they say is their final offer. The IMF have met um, without Cyprus, uh, which I think is quite telling, and they have come up with their final offer for Greece. So who has the power here, Greece or the IMF? So you have to separate on two sides here. Obviously, there's the Troika, which constitutes the International Monetary Fund, the European Central Bank and the European Commission. The European Central Bank and the IMF have had difficulties uh, reaching terms on their own, and they're both creditors in the sense that the, I, the, I, the uh, European Central Bank has wanted more leniency because most of the debt is held by Europeans. The IMF, which operates on a global scale, they want more strict terms to be enforced because they have an example. They don't want to set a precedent for other countries around the world. On the other hand, the, the Cyprus government, it's, there's a division within it. Um, they ran an anti-austerity ticket, but obviously they don't want this government to come down. And so the question is, who has more leverage? The, the Troika has more leverage in terms of that they have the money, but the Greek government has one thing of leverage, is to make the euro, is to exit the euro, have the euro collapse, and set off a chain reaction. So it's the, what they're trying to do is saying, we have enough leverage to bring down the post-war European experiment if we pull out of the euro. So if they do pull out of the euro, um, uh, Germany's vice-chancellor, Sigmund Gabriel, has said that they would have gigantic consequences. What would those consequences actually be? Uncharted territory, panic would obviously set in. History has taught us that the, the, the consequences in something of this nature, when panic sets in, is consistently negative. The question is to what degree? No one knows. It's uncharted territory. Obviously, Europe is much far prepared now than it was in May and June of 2012 when Greece had back-to-back -back elections and panic was beginning to set in. So three years they've had to prepare, but that's still the, the quote-unquote the firewalls that they say they have prepared, the, they're not completely impenetrable. And the, the consequences, and it can set off a chain reaction on a global scale also, which the American government is very much fearing. Okay, so let's look at the time scale of this. So say that they miss their deadline, they default their payment on Friday. What's the time scale for, for them being ejected from the, from the Eurozone? Well, it's, this is money that's due to the International Monetary Fund. In the past, when there's been deadlines for countries, not all the time that it's been met. It's been broken in the past, but usually there's been a 30-day period after that deadline that there's been time to negotiate and to try to come to the table and create a solution. Here in the sense it's that the, uh, there's several payments due to the IMF and then you have other payments due to the European Central Bank and to the IMF in July and in August. So if they have to try to make, they want to, if they want to do something only temporary for June, that still leaves July and August. So this is something that it's, it has to be done we're talking not just days or weeks. I mean, it's, it's got to be immediate. Hence, the, the why Angela Merkel called in all the three players from the Troika to come into Berlin, get the deal going from their side, present the terms from Greece on Wednesday, on June 3rd, and hopefully by Friday they'll accept. But that's a big question. So you have divisions within each side. But you see, Greece has got these international creditors that have agreed to lend them 7.2 billion euros mm -hmm. on condition that they, they return to these austerity measures. But Cyprus is not going to do that, is he? Because he, he, he won the election on a, on a ticket of anti-austerity. Yeah, he made promises during the election, which obviously he was not able to keep. And this is political reality is now setting in. His greatest threat his greatest threat to his political survival comes from within his own party, which is technically a party. In reality, it's a coalition. One third of the far left of his party are, are, are threatening to not pay the IMF. And so if that happens, it's either he reshuffles his coalition, drops that one third, or there's a possibility of going to new elections. He's a, he himself has his political survival at stake, and he's an opportunist in many ways, and will do whatever it takes. Okay, Marco Vicentino, thank you very much for joining me.